Hello, welcome and join us in this uh, part two from PNL in a day, and uh, we're gonna build a PNL in DAX. The final product we're gonna make in this part of the series is this PNL. So you see the subtotals, suppressed uh, subtotal, and also the down drill option to go one level deeper. But first, I want to put my hands together for uh, Derek and Matt because uh, this PBX file and this video part is based on reverse engineering of the video of Matt Ellington. To grab your own version of this file, click up the link below, join us in the finest corner, and don't forget to subscribe. Well, in this PBX file, I make use of one uh, data set. We built it in the previous part, part one of PNL in a day, and we grab that data set in this PBX file. Uh, so if you open this PBX file, go to transform data, that will open Power Query, and in Power Query you can go to the data sources, you get an, maybe an error in your case because we have to change the data source of the Excel file. Also the Excel file is in the finance corner. You can change it by clicking the change source button and then we're gonna browse to wherever you have put the Excel file. We press OK, we press close, we press close and apply and then you can refresh your data. If you press on the data module view then we're gonna see this um, hierarchy. So, Let's explain it. This is a waterfall. We have the PNL uh, format in the header table. Then the accounts table we use between the header table and the general ledger table. And we also have a calendar table for the time dimension. And we have a scenario table because in our general ledger, but normally only the booking keeping system put in all the transactions of the company, the final transactions. We also stacked the budget. So we have to filter the general ledger for budget and for actuals. So we need the scenario. In a future part, part three or part four, we will make ratios and that's this disconnected table. Let's take a close look to the module and the relationships. I put a snapshot on the screen, but let's take a look in the data model view of the waterfall from the PNL to the general ledger. First, we want to see the PNL. We call it the header table. This is basically what we want to show in the end product: a static PNL with calculated pieces like gross margin and also operating expenses directly from the general ledger and connected to the waterfall by the columns we already saw in the relationship view by the tables. So take example the operating expenses. How is this table, the header table, connected to the accounts table? Well, we're going to press on this one. On the one side, everything on the header table has to be unique and on the many side you can see it's connected to the header assignment part in the accounts table. Now we're going to open the accounts table, also called the chart of accounts table, to see how the accounts table then is connected to the general ledger table for the operating expenses. So we're going to go over to the accounts table now, this is number five operating expenses, and the header table, this one is connected to the accounts table header assignment. So let's filter for the preview and now, now we see which account key belong to this header assignment for operating expenses. So if we go back to the data module, then we're gonna click on this relationship, the uh, account relationship with the general ledger and we can see okay it's connected by account key. So from top it's connected to the header assignment 
the chart of accounts and from the bottom to the general ledger it's connected to the, to the account key. So now all the accounts here are on the one side and in the table general ledger the transactions for the finance are on the many side. So if we then for our example filter one account so let's take number 87 you will see here all the transactions but also the budget for the rent of course of the completeness of the example we also have to um, filter all the other account keys that uh, belong to the operating expenses in the chart of accounts but uh, you get the drift so let's don't do that so now we have some backup information how to put the data model in place and to set up our uh, pbx file we're going to start to building the pnl in dax first i give some sidestep for the real beginners in power bi so uh, dax is the measurement language from power bi and it's just like formulas in excel but you don't build in excel a formula in one cell you build a formula for a total column so um, you can put the formulas in a table on youtube i already built i made a video about how to build a measure table and now we just put in the measures in the measure table how you do that you click on the right side you click on measure and then it will open up the formula bar to add a new measure okay so we're going to put this raw amount measure in the measure table i already did that so i click on it and now you see okay raw amount is a sum of the general ledger amount so what is this measure does is it's um summing the total not with a filter a total of the column amount and we place a sum for it so it's the total it's the sum then in power bi now you can add filter context or row context you can filter add filters in this table but you can also filter on a based on an other column in an other table that is connected through the data model so that's what we're going to do because the general ledger this sum is summing up the total from the general ledger the budget all years together and the actuals so it's it's one big number on the right we see visuals we added a table visual and we dragged the measure into this table now you see here this is the total amount for all everything secondly we made a matrix a matrix is just like a pivot table in excel and we dragged it on this table now we sliced based on our time dimension table so we have here our calendar we have here our general ledger it's connected by date but in our calendar table we also summed up every date in a specific year so now we can slice and dice based on year so we have in our columns the years and we put in our account key in the rows and as a value here just like in pivot table we drag and drop our measure the raw amount now you can see it's sliced and diced our two 39 million in one two three four years and also already based on account keys for this example i also added two slices you can just add you click on it and it will it will open a new box like this on your um, on your report page and you can drag something to the field that's for the real beginners now we're gonna step up a little bit um, we have the raw amount and in the real life you just want to make sure you got the right uh, measurement in the right totals so what you're going to do then is that you're going to select only the actuals well based on our 
connection with the scenario key, we know that one is an actual. So in a normal situation, we select one and we select profit plus balance sheet. And now we're supposed to have here all zeros. Because in a bookkeeping system, uh, you have debit and credit. And altogether, every year, every month, have to be zero based on the system. Um, we don't see that because there are already in the data warehouse made some translations to make everything positive. We're gonna dive into that later. But that in real life is your first, um, your first check and balance. I will select profit and loss and both this for the example. So now we have it, the formula and our sum on the lowest level, on the account key level in general ledger. And that we have on the left side and on the top we have our years. Now we go one, one aggregation, one grouped higher. So we want to have uh, aggregation based not on the account key, but on the header assignment. We just made a new matrix. So let's do that again. We add a matrix to the, to the report and we grab the header assignment from the middle table and that's the chart of accounts table. So the chart of accounts table we open and we grab our headers and we put it on the rows. And then we select our raw, mesh, more raw account and we put it for the values. Just to make the example the same on this start page, we add also the years from our calendar table. So we grab our calendar table and we grab the year column. And we add the year column to our matrix visual. So now you will see the totals on the bottom that are the same as on this video, uh, on this report page, but the uh, aggregation is on the chart of accounts based on uh, the grouped uh, header assignment in the chart of accounts. You see some problems now because you see, okay, it's not sorted right. And also all the numbers are adding up together. So the subtotals are right if you like to have everything positive but then it won't uh, add up like a bookkeeping system, uh, so you get the wrong total number. In the next uh, few slides, we're gonna see how to solve that problem. So we're gonna go one level higher. So now we went from the header assignment to the header table with the PL, and we did the same. We take a matrix visual and we add the raw amount as a value and now we add from the header table so we go to the highest level and that's the header that's our PL. here we add the headers to the rows for this example I don't slice by year but it can, uh, you can do it. Now you see the same problem again with the total and you also see, hey, I only see the um, headers where numbers are, but I don't see the gross margin. So I don't see the subtotals that will be calculated normally in a PL that has no data in the general ledger. Okay, we're gonna solve that to problems. Just for example, you can see here what I mean. You can see here in the picture of the header table, you can see the number one that is just calculated by Power BI through the data model to the waterfall top down for the headers in the transactions table, the general ledger table. But the number twos, the net sale, the gross profit, the operating profit and the net income are not calculated. So now first we want to see all the 
lines from the header table. Well, that's a very simple solution. So we have here the table. And what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, click on the table. And on the rows, we go to the header. And then we say show items with no data. Now we got also the rows with no data. One other thing we solved in the header table is that we can sort based on the header sorter. So we sort the header based on the header sort. What you're going to do is just go for this table, we grab the column header. If you have selected them, Power BI is opening some helpful uh, tabs and you can say we want to sort. And you can see here we sort the header table based on the header sort. So now, because header sort is a number, yeah, the, uh, it is in the same order we want. That's the first part. The second part is the numbers are not right. We want to have to add up the numbers. So now we're going to take a look at a new formula. This formula is a little bit complicated, but you can see we're putting a, a sum with an x. What it means is we're gonna sum and x is not telling that you have to sum like we did by row of by column but you want to sum also based on the every row. So you are making every row and then you add a total after the table and that you are summing down um, like you do with the amount. So to make to um, to see what it does, we add a new formula. So if I make example formula and we put in some x, now you see is prompting. He's saying, okay, on which table? Do you want to go row by row for which kind of measure? So we have two, two parts. We have a table part and we have an expression part that we will have the sum from. Okay, so in our example, this is our table. We make a new table also with a new formula. And the formula values is making a new table. So, uh, which kind of table we are making? Well, we make based on the account signs. We say, okay, what values are in the account sign? Well, let's go to the account sign based on the accounts table. And now you see the sign formula. And what the formula does is say, okay, I take the only the values that are inside this column. So I make a table of minus one and one. So basically now we have a small table of minus one and one. That's our table. And then based on this two, two uh, numbers, we're gonna sum our expression that we saw for sum x. So this is now our table, a table of two rows, minus one and one. And this is what we're going to do. You say we already have an expression, already have a measure, the raw amount. So we use that. And then we're going to multiply it by the account's sign. So basically we're going to tell it, okay, do one or minus one. And because it is a sum x, it will iterate and it will sum up all the values. Now we're going to take a look at the measure. So this is the sum x measure. You can actually make in Power BI make it better readable. So this is the table part, values account sign, and this is the 
expression part a measure multiplied by the account sign now we drag and drop the, the amount adds up measure into this uh, matrix and you will see it's add up right now because you see the cost of sales is now negative the revenue is positive and hey what we got the right number at the bottom uh, still we don't have any subtotals but it's a start so I know some people are uh, find it a little bit hard to grasp and get a head around on the measure from Matt for the values part so I have made a little bit an alternative and that also gets the same results so what is the alternative well let's see it here we'll still use the sumx like I explained so the table part is the general ledger and this is the calculation part and the calculations we're gonna say okay take the general ledger amount the column or use here the measure raw amount that's the same and multiply that by and then I used here the function uh, related account sign and what the function related does is it's traveling through the data model from the general ledger by this part to the accounts table well if you do that you can see okay I travel by the related and I go for the column account sign that's the same sign with one and zeros for every account key so that's the alternative and this is also working in the later part for the display value the same alternative so we want to make the subtotals right but before we're going to do that we have to sort two things to have to solve two things first uh, i don't like the uh, negative number for taxes the negative number for operating expenses in my presentation i want to see 50 million but in the calculation i want to see the 28 at the bottom so that's one thing we have to sort out the other thing is hey frank i know you switched signs for cost of sales from positive to negative but why is the revenue changing well that's because the formula is still working it's working on the account sign on the lowest level so on every account has one allocated minus one or one and an account uh, for uh, um, that belongs to the revenue is discount but discount you have to subtract so we put in minus one under the revenue so now you can see ah okay so I changed the sign for the lowest level for the discounts and not for the gross sales but also for the returns and adjustments yeah now we know why it's to 127 million so <clears throat> just after the this uh, calculation just one small extra layout because we can see that the uh, header column is sorted by the uh, header sort column for the header table and we added uh, from the counts table the sub level so and that's not sorted it's still sorted alphabetically so let's do that let's change the sort we just go to the accounts table we gonna grab this one so we can see okay it's the subheader and we say subheader has to be sorted by the subheader sort that also is available in the table okay be aware there has to be a one to one relationship in this same uh, table so you cannot have a receivable uh, one one two it all has to be the same one description then it has to be one number so if here is the same description you have to return the same number they have to be a one on one and otherwise it's not working so now let's move over to solve the issue from the negative numbers we want to have the 
right display amount. So uh, we have a raw amount, we have the amount as up, and the display amount, we just want to see the cost of sales, the positive. We use the same formula as the amount add up. This is practically the same, but just another column. We don't use the signs column, but we use the report sign. So in our accounts table, we use the report sign. We already did that um, in our pre-work -work, pre in our Excel sheet. So it's the same principle also with one and minus one, and then based on the formula it will give you the correct header and subheader and number but still the total isn't right so we have to bring it all together because we want to have the sub the total from the amount add up and for the other part we want to have the display value well, Matt Ellington called the measure that will do that, the magic additive total. So basically what we're going to do is we have here a matrix and on the rows we have the header column and on the second level we have the subheaders and you can say okay every row has one of these um, values from one of these columns except the total row. So we can say in the formula, yeah, if that's true, use the display value and otherwise use the uh, amount add up. Let's see in the formula, that can be uh, accomplished by using variables. So we have here a variable and we say if is filtered is the logic is the measure is the subheader accounts table filtered yes then display value is the header filtered yes then display value is nothing filtered oh then amounts add up you can see here that this, I use another function around the is, is filtered function but that's because I also want to have this applicable to the header balance sheet uh, table. So that is just to combine uh, this logic in one formula. So to explain it a little bit better, we made a separate report page and on this page we, def we separate the magic addictive total in pieces. So we have a measurement table and we added on this table three measurements. So first, this is the measurement for the subheader of the header, excuse me. And we just return only the is header filtered. So we can also just better example, we can filter this all away. Basically this measure only is asking, hey, we did we called uh, a variable we give it this name is the header filtered and then we say okay is the header filtered or not and uh, always with if you use a variable you have to use return and, and this is the result so we just ask eh, is it true or is it false just a statement and so and now you can see okay revenue subheader is false uh, header filtered is true, so one or uh, one the header or the subheader is filtered is true, and only on the bottom you see that all three are false. So that's the only one when you have to um, return the uh, return the not the display uh, value but the amount add up value, like you see here in the formula, and it also goes good. Uh, except for one situation and then it's returning the wrong um, the wrong measure in the switch so let's find it out so you can see here the magic addictive total you can see the display and the amount set up and it's the magic addictive total is false or false false so it's returning the amount set up 
But this is the situation when the is filtered function, so in the amount here, the is filtered function is not working. I'm going to show you. So we have revenue, we have operating expenses, and now we want to see the total. Well, revenue should deduct the operating expenses, and we should have then the amounts add up 77 million. But because uh, is filtered is returning a true and a true, it is not displaying the amount add up, but it's explain but it is displaying the display value. So we want to have a false at the bottom for the header filter. Well, this is just one small adjustment. So in the header filter, we have the is filtered function two times, but we only want to see it for the PNL. So, but it's two times the is filtered function, and we can just just go for the is in scope, just we really replace just the is filtered function with the is in scope function. And now we can see on the right side the header filters is giving true, so that was wrong. And for the in scope function, the header function, the header in scope giving returns and false. So the is either in scope function now, the subheader is false, the header scope is false, so also the is either in scope is now returning false. So basically, if we just gonna change all the is filtered functions in this formula format with is in scope, it's working again. So that we did in the magic addictive total improved. So we just removed the is filtered and replaced it with is in scope. Also, we changed the name, but that's a small thing. And now we're gonna add this one on our table, just add it here, and now you see ah, it's returning the right total. So the magic addictive total is returning the right total. Well in the rest of this example we use the isfiltered function from Matt, but now you know you can just replace it uh, from uh, for a real uh, scenario with the is in scope function. So now we want to solve the issue of the uh, subtotals. Uh, to show all the subtotals we already uh, this showed you earlier, go to the matrix, go to rows, and in the rows you have the column header and show all the values with all with no data. And now we have to make our own data for the subtotals. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna add formulas to get uh, numbers on the subtotals. In this case, we use the header table to insert the calculated um, totals, and we're gonna make running totals based on the header table. Um, that's not always uh, applicable, uh, but in the American situation um, and in some Western situations, it's applicable. You can also hard code more um, just to show the calculated subtotals in your measurement, but that's an other video. Just so, so we're gonna here show the running total method. So what is the running total method? So let's take a look at the uh, header table. It's not, you don't deduct on each row. It's based on, okay, we have a, a, a header sort. Uh, one is revenue, so uh, I want to show on revenue everything from revenue. So number one, I want to show, uh, and that's 127 million. If I want, if I say okay, I'm gonna show the running total of number two. That's one and two all together. And if I want to show the running total of number three, it's one, two, and three together. And that's the same for gross amount. It's one, two, three together makes four. And you can see here that's how it's working. So you see, okay, we have revenue. And around the total, you see 127 million. You see cost of sales, it's in, uh, because you show 
if you um, calculate the 127 but also the 41 because it's less than or equals to that's the running so it's a cumul cumulative of what you're seeing on its row this is uh, on this row inclusive all the other rows above it well how does that show in a formula well we make the running total formula as uh, in this matrix i select them this is a variable and it will return this um, measurement so we go we add a variable so we can iterate over each row and know where we are in the table on which line to show which calculated item so first we all we want to know on which number we are this header ID will show I what is the sort number I have then in our measurement we have a calculate we use as a measurement the addictive total but then we change the filters we say I don't want to see the addictive total only for the applicable line no I want to see it for all the headers for the whole table so remove all the filter and then add the next filter and that is all the header sort lines till the row you are in the table so less than or equal to the selected header ID okay great that's make the running total but then we don't want to see <coughs> then we don't want to see uh, the running total on the separate lines we want to see the actuals on the uh, on the lines and that we have the calculate type in the header table we say okay for all the subtotals calculate subtotals that are number two uh, but for the normal uh, sum we want to use we say okay that's a one and we call this the correct display amount well actually Matt is calling it the correct display display amount and you can see here it's just an if statement based on each row it's iterating over each row in the header table if the calculated type is one then give me the magic addictive total if it's two then give me the running total measurement so this is just a measurement that's combining the past two measures well now we are almost there right okay so yeah so Frank you think you are finished but I really don't like that we have here at the highest level revenue but then if I collapse of expand net sales I also see the gross sales returns and the discount and even on um, net income I see everything so that's not no nah, that's not nice I want to suppress that Frank is that possible well yes that's possible uh, let's do that and uh, in this case Matt had already have the answer for us he already provided a detailed column in our uh, header table so basically uh, on the subtotals we calculated the calculated subtotals uh, we are saying hey we don't want to have um, details so a zero if we want to have the details so it has to be collapsible then it's a one and also taxes we don't like to expand that so we also set a zero for that let's see how that work in a formula it's the same principle um, it's the same principle as before so we make one measure and we say we want we have three alternative alternative outcomes of it has to be blank 
if the detail is zero, or if the calculate type is one, we have the magic addictive total. If it's two, we want to have the Ronan total. So we make a variable and say, okay, is the selected value in the header table the calculate type? So we can see this one. Next, we also want to have if the selected value, what is the detail on the same row? And then we also want to have a know if is filtered an account's subheader. And this is just a um, better if statement. So in the previous we had calculate one, then uh, show me one measure and otherwise show me the second. A switch true statement we can use to see, okay, which one is true and then activate that one. And you don't have to go uh, any further. So we say switch true if the subheader is visible, is true. And we have a display detail code of zero in our header table, then return blank. Otherwise, if the calculate type is one, then to return the magic addictive total. If the calculate is two, then return the running total measurement. So basically what is uh, doing, if you see here the net sales with the total amount, you see, okay, that's blank. But on the row itself, the net sale is returning a calculate, uh, um, calculate type uh, uh, two, a running total. So the subheader visual, the, the lower level, then blank, higher level, then uh, the calculate. So what if the running total isn't so easy? And, and let me explain. My first client, I want to um, use this technique and I used the running total, but in the example, we had an extra subtotal. So we had a subtotal for costs. So the running total is basically all the number ones. So the one of revenue, the one of costs, and then you get your gross margin, one and one. And then the next one, operating expenses, and then you get the operating profit. So that is all the ones every time above. So basically from one to six for the operating profit, from one to nine for the net income, all the ones. But we had a subtotal for uh, for costs. So let, let's hop over to the real situation. It is in Dutch, but just explaining uh, and uh, give you a, a solution. So you can see here we had some uh, some subtotal with total costs, and it has to be the sum of everything above number order number three, and till of course just like the other running total till number fourteen. So we have to deduct. Uh, number one till number four. Well, basically what we did was, okay, we still have the calculation type one and two, but we just add an extra calculation type. So we made number three. And in this calculation type, we called, uh, yeah, there's in Dutch, but the running total extra. We just said, okay, we have the same measures, except for the filtering. We have the filtering, we have the table uh, order number is above three and is less than the current header or the number. So basically we just made one change. And then in the switch measure, I just discussed also uh, the matches version, but we had calculation number one, we call number two, and we added number three. So if it's number three, the calculation type in the table, then we want to have the running total extra. And you can see here the result. Uh, well, basically not, we have the numbers gone, but it's, this was the result of how the table looked like in uh, this situation. To make the total amount measurement complete, I added two things. And no, don't get uh, scared from this uh, measurement. I added some extras based on Derek's video. So, um, and I add some extras based on the balance sheet. So two things. So based on uh, Derek 
his uh, video, I added two things. I added the, uh, there's also a subheader to Haragi in uh, the account table. So we're gonna grab the account table and we say, okay, there's a subheader to, so that there's another level we have to take uh, in account. So that uh, is Derek is doing, and I'll also put that in the measurement. So that's the subheader two is visual. You can see um, it's also in this formula. I broke it up. So these are variables that are both for the PNL and for the balance sheet. Then first I have the amount the PNL one. That is just what um, Matt has made and one addition from uh, Derek. But then I also make a loop. Okay. We have to check if not uh, amount PNL2 uh, uh, is in place because I also want to suppress, like Derek did, I also want to suppress the revenue. Um, in the final piece, you will see it. It's beautiful because you have now the net sales and not also one combined 1.54 million in this uh, row and also in this row because that's the same number. Let's go back to the total amount measurement. So we added this small variable and we add an extra loop for uh, the situation if it is uh, the subheader two situation or it is the revenue situation. You can see that in this piece of the formula. So I hope, uh, yeah, it's a little bit um, hard to read, but it's an OR and an AND statement. And I also added a piece for the balance sheet. So the same formula is applicable for the balance sheet, but not for the running total for the total liability and equity. So in this case, we just use the raw amount but I say, okay, remove the filters from the accounts and then put on the filter for the liability and owner's equity. And that's in the case if it's um, calculate type balance sheet two, but also if it's liability. So then I change the measurement to a total liability and equity. So we have the debit piece, we have the balance sheet amount piece, and then I say, okay, if it has one value from the header table, that's the PL, then to show me the amount from the PL2, this one, or if it has one value from the header from the balance sheet, then use the amount balance sheet, otherwise, it's blank. So in this final piece, the final PNL, you can see the formula, the total formula in work. Um, we add the header, the subheader, and account descriptions to the row, and we added the year to the columns. We can uh, hide the total, and now we have the PNL because we selected the profit and loss statement, the measurement, the total amount in the matrix will work just for the PNL. And if we want to show the balance sheet uh, and the PNL, so I just made here the PNL, uh, the PNL, and I copy it, and then we added the header from the balance sheet table. So basically we use not the PNL header table, but the the header from the balance sheet. Let's see the table. Let's take a look. So this is the same principle, same calculation type, and the same detail. And we add the measure to it. So also the header balance sheet the same accounts table as the accounts table from the 
profit and loss and the same account description column from the accounts table. So let's make a small recap of our measures we made so far. So we started with the raw amount and that was just the sum of all the numbers in the general ledger, the amount. And then we wanted to have an amount add up. So we want to have the um, right calculation of the income, but it was with plus and minus that we did with this formula, just a sum x over the raw amount and then multiplied by the applicable sign from the chart of accounts. We added an alternative, if the value formulas was a little bit too difficult to understand, then we said, okay, this is the same, the same formula, <coughs> same outcome, but a little bit a different formula. We used the related function just to go over the general ledger amount, that's the raw amount, and then go to the related account sign in the chart of accounts. Next, we did the same formula and the same alternative, but done for the dis uh, display value, just, just for the same, just for the same system, but a different column. Then we want to add the magic additive total. So we want to have all the display values for all the rows with the header. And as the total, we want to have the uh, the amount add up. We made also a little alternative, improved, so that this is always calculated right with the is scope instead of an is filtered. So this was a filtered and we used an in scope for the alternative. Then we calculated a running total and based on the running total, not the next one, correct word. Based on uh, the correct display amount, we added an if statement, maybe better readable like this. If calculate tape was one, then we wanted to have the magic uh, addictive total and otherwise we wanted to have the running total and that was because of the, uh, we combined this for the subtotals. So number ones for the normal and number twos for the running total. So we have all the rows from the header calculated. And then from the last measure, we combined some extras to make a calculation. Okay, if it's a calculation type one, then the magic additive total to running total, but we also want to suppress some parts of the PL. So if we collapsed, so we don't want to show the revenue, and also we didn't want to show uh, the, sub the uh, subheaders beneath the headers. Well, that's just the recap and I hope you liked it. Before we continue to make it all pretty and add the ratios to it, um, we uh, this is a great great separate point to thank Matt Ellerton and Derek for their uh, input. Um, I hope you can follow it along with the, with the file and you make some progress in your own journey. Um, and I hope to see you in the next video because yeah, we now have the DAX but we want to make it pretty. So we move over to uh, some other gurus. So we're gonna see something from Sam McKay and also from Rick to make the ratios and to make it all pretty and look like a real PL in Power BI. So I hope to see you in the next part of this video series of a PL in a day. And also don't forget to subscribe and putting something in the comments if you like this. Okay, bye bye.